Hello again. Well, summer is here <laughs> and I've picked these beautiful flowers from my garden and I really love them. And as you can see, that's my first canal house in the background. And during the summer, the lights aren't on very often, but this was late at night and I just thought it looked so lovely. But um, the flowers, yeah, I thought they would look great in miniature. And I do have a book on um, making these flowers in clay. And it's from Japan. I even bought the clay as well. Uh, it's from Japan. And so it has, it's by Miniature Rosie. She is so good. Uh, so I bought this book some time ago already. And it has the instructions of how to make these flowers in miniature. Oh, where's the rose? Here's the rose. But of course it's in Japanese and even though the pictures are pretty much self-explanatory, it's always very nice to be able to read the text as well. So um, a while ago I showed you uh, uh, an app that you could use for uh, translating text. But um, on my miniatures journal vlog number 58, Jane left a comment and she said there was an even easier way um, because on your iPhone, and she said most other phones have it as well. Now I have an iPhone, so I don't know if other phones have, uh, have it as well, but um, there's, a, there's an option to turn something on. Um, let me see, what was it again? If you go to general settings and then language and region, you can turn it on. There's a little sliding thingy. <laughs> you turn that on. And then if you take a photo, or actually you don't even have to take a photo, just point um, the camera at uh, text. Let's take this bit of text here. So now you can already see it's saying that it's found a bit of text. Can you see that? It has little yellow brackets right there. Then I tap that icon in the corner and it has the text select all and then down here it says translate and then it's translating and you won't be able to tell. I guess it's very hard to tell but now it's translated that text in Dutch. I mean it's that easy. So thank you, Jane, very much for that uh, tip. <laughs> now, another uh, viewer of mine, and this was uh, Jojo's mum, Dorothy. <laughs> I guess she's, her name is Dorothy. Um, she asked me about this and she said, what is that wood stand called, please? And this is a bench bin. And um, we use it in several of, of the classes I've been to. They've used it. And I think these were either made by uh, Jens Storp or Bill Robertson. I cannot remember. I think it was one of those two. But um, I think they, are, they have them in Castine as well. And in Miniature in Tune, in Tune we have them as well. Um, but I said, I will they're easy to make and I will show you how to make one in next week's video, which is this week. So, I will now show you how to make this bench pin. Okay, so let's make a bench pin or a raised bench pin. So, um, I've got some MDF here. Look, it's a bit dusty. <laughs> um, and these are off cuts I bought at the uh, local DIY shop. And, um, these were like 50 cents or something like that. Uh, they're cheap. You can use uh, plywood or regular wood if you want. It doesn't matter. So I'll use these. Of course, they're heavy. <laughs> um, the first thing you have to uh, do is... I'll, I'll just get a bench. It's a very simple bench bin, and basically that's all it is. Uh, it's it's this, you know, it's a, a bit of wood with a V cut out of it. 
and that's when you are sawing. My saw blade broke, so I need to put a new one in. Um, when you're sawing, you can saw here in this in this area and then your work is still supported that's what they're for but um why we're using a raised bench bin is because when you're using this this clamps onto your table you're always sitting hunched over because you have to you know you want to be close to your work and um your table height is not as high as an actual actual jeweler's bench and a jeweler's bench is much higher they're actually about well i don't know uh, nearly shoulder height i would say close to it anyway so what you have to do is try to figure out how how <laughs> can't even speak anymore <laughs> how high you would like to raise your bench pin so what is uh, a nice working height for you what is comfortable for you and for some people that's a little bit lower and for other people that's higher you know depending on how tall you are maybe or what is your most comfortable uh, sitting position or how high your table is anyway so try and figure out that and mine um, I would say mine it's about here this height would be, well, how high is that? We'll measure it. For me, that would be, I think this would be comfortable. So that is about 20 centimeters total. Yeah, so I'll make, I'll make mine 20 centimeters high. And again, you can make it higher or lower. That's up to you. And I'll show you my uh, official bench pin. <laughs> well, um, this one, I've had this for, well, forever, long, long time. And it comes with a C clamp and you just put that through here and then you attach it to your desk like that. But as you can see, <laughs> I have one of those old 70s uh, metal desks and they're great i mean they're not pretty but they're <laughs> really good but as you can see this part it's just too thick for the c clamp so um i always use one of those these big clamps which is annoying because you know you you get this gets in the way of your legs and um so i never use this one i always use uh my my little that one <laughs> quickly uh quick and easy i'm lazy basically <laughs> uh, and maybe uh i should just get a bigger c clamp i'm sure they exist i just never gotten around to that so and i've just noticed something <laughs> that the 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 price on here is still in guilders and um, F is for uh, Gilder. Well, actually, it's Florin, but um, that stands for the Dutch Gilder. Um, Two sixty-five. Well, first of all, we've had the euro for what twenty? What was it? Two thousand and two. So twenty twenty-one years now. And um, this this comes as a set. So this this is part part of it. So two sixty-five. Well. Uh, they're about 10 euros now, so that would be, what, 22 guilders, <laughs> so 265, that's pretty, that's a long time ago, I probably got this when I was a teenager, <laughs> I don't know, but I thought that was funny, <laughs> it's old, so uh, I will use this as an example, although I think this one is quite narrow, so I'll make it a little bit wider, actually, um, Oh, I think 10 centimeters wide instead of, this is six and a half, so I'll make it 10. So you have a little bit more room for a project or to lay something on top of there. Um, so 10 centimeters and then, um, well, a 20 long. So make it bigger than, than what it was, than this one anyway. Um, yeah. 
So 10 by 20 and then I'll have to cut a base and a support in between. And this is, uh, I guess it's nine millimeter uh, multiplex. Oh no, it's not. It's, um, what? I can't see. 12, probably. Yeah, 12, 12 millimeters, which is fine. Uh, if you want it heavier, you can do that, but this is this is fine. 12 millimeters, which is what? In inches? Uh, have a look yourself. I'll, I'll put it on 12 millimeters. So the bottom row is 12 and the top row is in inches. <laughs> I never know. Have a look at it. <laughs> Um, so I'll cut one 20 by 10. That's finished, but um, now that I'm looking at it, I still have to cut a V in here. I think it's a little bit short. So I'll use this as the bottom and I'll cut another one and I'll make it 25 centimeters instead of 20. So a little bit longer. Right, so that's the top now. It's a little bit longer, like that. And now I have to cut the pieces that make up the stand. And that's like this. Um, you'll need some space for the clamp. Where is mine? Or whichever clamp you have. So you'll need some space for that. So your stand starts here somewhere. So let's say uh, five centimeters in, like over here. We'll start with the stand so you have room to clamp, clamp it. You can clamp it on the side as well, but uh, it's nice if you have some room for a clamp in the front. So then we need to cut Where's my And that just happens to be 10 centimeters as well. It's just a little bit wider to stop it. That's left over. Um, one that goes like this. Like that. And then one that goes in the middle that way. I'll have to use another bit of MDF for that because I don't have enough. Um, and you have to measure the height because, of course, these were, what, 12 millimeters, I believe. So you want them, I want them 20 centimeters. So 20 centimeters minus uh, 12 for the bottom and 12 for the top, which is 24. So it would be 17.6 centimeters high. So this bit will have to be 
And I mean, it's not crucial. The only thing that's, you should, um, that should have the same height as this, this part and the part that goes that way. Those all have to be, those two have to be the same height. So 17.6. Centimeters in my case, you may want a shorter one. And this one, of course, here's another board. I needed two because I don't have enough. I'm always surprised at how much wood you're using for these, sorry, simple uh, projects. But anyway, so uh, very easy. I'll just measure that. Of course, you can just measure it with your ruler. <laughs> In my case, it's uh, about 13 and a half centimeters, 13.6. That one. That's the depth of this bit. And the height has to be the same as the other part we're just cutting. So that would be 17 point. So this way it has to be 17.6. And this way it has to be, for me at least, what did I say? 13.6, I believe. Centimeters. There, I've cut them both the same height, as you can see. And now, uh, so this is the part that goes in the back, like that. And this goes against that, like so. And you put that on top. It goes to the end. And that's it. <laughs> the camera angle is a little bit weird. <laughs> but um, next, um, I have to, well, first of all, I have to find the middle here and uh, make sure that this part goes in, in the middle. And then um, I can glue it. Um, and first, before I forget, I have to cut the V shape in here. not as neat as it could have been neater but it doesn't really matter anyway because you're going to be sawing in there and it's going to look a mess after you've been using it so this is fine oh and one more thing when you're cutting this v uh don't go past so when you're putting the the bench pin together here when you do it like that so you can see the back, the back will match up like that. So if you hold the back there, then the stand, that's that line. This V should not go past that line. Actually, it's nicer to have it in front of it. So, you know, when you're working on this, making your own, just keep that in mind. Otherwise you have to start again, which is a waste of wood or MDF. So now we've got this all finished and now we can glue it together. We still have to find the center for this. So now we can glue it together. Now what I think I'll do is glue these two together first. Like that 
and then uh, glue that to the bottom. So I'll need to find the center for this as well. Same, same thing. There. So this goes over here. And I'll just um, use my gluing jig because it will help to stabilize this end part right there. And I'll just use wood glue for this, which is fine. And I'm going to um, screw the bottom as well. And then I've got one of these, actually two, <laughs> of these metal blocks, and they will keep it nice and upright. Whenever I find these blocks, and I don't know, don't know what they're called, they're metal, they're really heavy, uh, they're machined, I don't know what they're for, to be honest, but I use them to um, keep everything straight and I use them as weights and I have, I have a small one and this one, a bigger one. They're great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll put some weight on there carefully. And let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm going into the garden and sit there for a bit and edit this part of the video. <laughs> well, this is not so bad. I'm sitting in the shade with a view of a beautiful clematis flowering, <laughs> editing my video. <laughs> Right, so that has dried and now I can glue this bit. So this is the stand to the bottom like that. Same procedure, just put some wood glue on there and a bit of weight and let it dry. Now this has dried for about half an hour and now I'm going to put the top on. Same thing. So just make sure that this is on the back um, matches this, the upright back. And then uh, do the same thing, just glue it. Well, that's been drying a long time. It's uh, almost midnight now. <laughs> so 
it's dry and it's finished. There it is. That's the stand. And um, it's really, I mean, I said I was gonna screw it at the bottom. It's really not necessary. It's fine, just glued like this. And uh, of course you have to clamp this part. bench pin or the bench pin stand is finished uh, we can now use it I wish you all happy solstice which actually is finished by the time you see this video but today is 21st of June so summer solstice um, thank you for watching and until next time <laughs>